In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some hard body dynamics. I've watched a lot of tutorials on this, and I found a lot of them to be sort of confusing and lacking. So I wanted to create one that I felt was easy to follow. We're going to look at creating this very common physics demonstration, and it's called Newton's Cradle. The fact that it's the holiday time of year, I thought it would be fun to use Christmas ornaments instead of steel balls. Okay, the whole key here is to use two objects that are linked together to create the, the pendulum effect. So let's do this. Let's come in and take a look at the very basic components that we need. So if we come over here, we take a look at my outliner. I've got a couple of things set up. I've got an empty at the top that's going to function as the core organizational mechanism for each of the ball assemblies, what I call a ball assembly. And that includes the wire that connects it to the mast structure here and then the ornament at the bottom. But the ornament itself is comprised of a series of objects. So the ornament itself is not going to be the physics bearing object. It's going to be parented to an object and it's just going to travel along with that object. So we have connectors that sort of connect the wires to the steel structure right there. And those are going to be passive. They're just going to be sitting there. They're not going to have any functional properties. But this empty is set up to align with where those wires would connect into these little connectors right there. So that's sort of in a critical position, which is why I've put it right there. And then we have the ornament at the bottom. So what we need to do now is we need to come in and add the two physics bearing objects into the scene. I've got the ball assembly empty selected and that's our hinge point. Again, it's, everything is going to hinge by that location. So shift S and we're going to do cursor to selected and then I'm going to press shift A and we are going to add a cone into the scene. I'm going to press the S key to scale that. I like the cone because it's got a directional indicator to it. And we're going to be looking at the local axis. You can see I've got orientation set to local and we're going to be looking at that in just a minute. But this is the default orientation to match the world orientation. The next thing that I want to do is now I wasn't paying attention. I should have been paying attention. If you look over here, it says scene parts. Whatever collection you happen to have active, your objects are going to get dropped in there. I'm always forgetting that, so I have objects going in the wrong area. I'm going to take the cone and move that back into the main scene, and then select Scene Collection. At the bottom, I've got this Christmas ornament assembly, and it has its own empty that I'm using as an organizational mechanism so it has the location that I want. If we look at this in the front view, it's right at the dead center of the ball of the ornament. So I'm going to press Shift and S, and I'm going to do a cursor to selected, and then I'm going to press Shift and A, and we're going to add a UV sphere into that location. I'm going to press the S key, and I'm going to drop that down so it gets right about to the same size as the ornament sphere. The body of the sphere. That's actually pretty important. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this two. This will be obvious in a minute. Two, and we'll call this physics sphere. And the cone, I'm going to call this one cone. So the important thing to understand is that these two objects, let me turn off the Christmas ornament. I'm holding the shift key. We'll turn that off so that we're only focusing on these. The ball, once it has a physics applied, it's just going to let gravity drop it until it interacts with something else with physics. But what we're going to do is we're going to have it connected to this so it can't just infinitely drop. That's the core thing to understand. What we want to do is take both of these two items and let's apply physics to them. I'm going to select the sphere and we're going to come over to our physics properties and we're going to apply a rigid body. This is going to be an active object, so we're going to leave it active. Uh, the mass maybe at 2.2 pounds is a little bit high. I'm, I'll take it down to maybe 1.5. Convex hull, we're going to switch over to sphere because it's exactly a sphere that, that it is that we're using. And bounciness, I'm going to drag up quite a bit higher because it's these balls are going to be swinging and they're going to need to have a certain degree of bounciness to them. The linear damping down here, 
that can have a bearing on what we're going to be doing, but the higher this value goes, the more each hit of the ball to the next ball is going to dampen down the values. And we actually want it to stay over here to the left, so we're not actually losing a significant amount of energy. For the cone, what we're going to do is we're going to also apply a rigid body, but the only thing that we need to do here is assign it to be passive. And this is really the key thing. Both of these are physics enabled. This is passive and this is active. This is going to be an anchor point and it's going to be non-rendering. So what we need to do is connect these two things together so this knows that it needs to do this. So if I just press the space bar now, you can see that the sphere just dropped off. And now we're going to apply a rigid body constraint. Now let me show you something. If you came up to object, you would come down to rigid body and there is a connect operation. And what this is going to do is basically the same thing that we're about to do, but it's a different way of approaching it. So I'm going to do it by way of coming over properly to the physics panel over here and showing you how to manually configure it. So I'm going to say rigid body constraint and at the top, we're going to change that to point, but we're going to end up changing it to another one, but we're going to start off with point. But the thing to note is that down here with objects, first object is the cone, and the second object is the physics sphere. And that's why I named them that way. So now these two things have a relationship from the standpoint of the physical behavior that's going to happen. So if I press the space bar, nothing happens. Gravity is just drawing it down exactly. But if I were to take this and move it, now it would swing around. So for instance, if I, if I came back over here to zero and I took this and I just moved it off like that, and pressed the space bar, now it's just, it's going to swing around like that. Okay. So let's bring this back over and I'm going to undo and bring that back down. Okay. Now, the important thing to understand is that that point function, let's, let's come back over here to cone, and we look at point, that means it can just rotate around in, in sort of a 360 degree type of uncontrolled way, and we don't want that to happen. We're only going to be wanting it to swing essentially around one axis. So that's where we're going to come over and go from point to hinge. Now, hinge has a particular behavior to it, and it's only going to hinge around the local z-axis of the object. Well, you can see here that the blue arrow is the local z-axis. If we don't change this, nothing is going to happen. So I need to come over to the rotation function, grab this, and rotate it by 90 degrees. I just typed in 90. So now when we take a look at this, you can see it's going to rotate around this local z-axis. That's really the core of what it is that we need to do. But now we're going to add some organizational functionality to this. I have that original ball assembly empty. And let's take that our two physics objects and move those in and parent them. So just hover over there and then hold the shift key and that will drop those inside of that empty. The connector is purely visual. It's not doing anything beyond being sort of a visual element here. So I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to drop that inside a ball assembly. And let's re-enable. I'm going to hold the shift key and click the eye icon here. We're going to take our Christmas ornament, hold the shift key, drag that inside a ball assembly. Now we're going to come back to this. So here again, I'm just going to press the shift key and just disable that so we're not tempted to see that. So what we want to do now is we want to add one more organizational structure to this to allow us to more easily control the position of the sphere when we rotate it. It's linked right now from a physics standpoint, but if we want to animate this, we're just going to have to grab it and move it into some position that will allow it, the physics system to swing it down and hit the next one. But it, it's imprecise in terms of posing it. We're going to come up to the main empty, which has the position that we want, because it's theoretically all rotating around this location. So I'm going to press Shift S, and we're going to take the cursor back up there, Shift A, and we're going to add another empty. It's kind of enormous, so we're going to reduce its size. And I'm going to call this, call this posing rotation. Hold the shift key and we're going to parent it inside of our ball assembly. 
And then we're going to take the physics sphere, hold the shift key and parent it to that posing rotation. Spell that correctly. So from a physics standpoint, all that's going to allow us to do is pose it in a predictable way. But once the physics system engages, it doesn't matter that that's going to be there. I'm going to hold the shift key and re-enable our Christmas ornament itself. And that now needs to get moved into its correct organizational location, which is parented to the physics sphere. So I'm going to hold the shift key and drag it underneath there. So it's going to just be along for the ride now. The physics is applying to the physics sphere. In fact, we don't want it to render, so I'm going to turn off rendering for it. But that's going to carry our Christmas ball along. So let's come in now and let's propagate these to five total sets of our swinging spheres. Come into the front and what I want to do is select hierarchy for all of these components. And we're going to do a duplicate linked. Press the X key and bring it over so it's right about like that, almost sitting on top of the sphere next to it. Press Shift R, Shift R, Shift R to get five total of our hanging balls. And I'm going to hold the Shift key to select all five of them and move them to the center of the scene. Okay, so let's come over to our scene properties and we have a rigid body world down here. And we want to make sure and set the solver iterations up high enough so that it works pretty accurately. The default of 10 is a good starting point, but you really kind of need a few more, in my opinion. So I usually set it up to at least like 30 and just see how that goes. That's the number of solving iterations between frames. And the more you have, the more accurate the simulation is. So we're going to come down and I also set my simulation end to 500 frames. Okay. Let's come back up to the first one, expand this out, and we're going to come to posing rotation for this. This is the mechanism that's going to allow us to easily pose where the starting point is for our physics sphere. And we're going to go right up here. And then we're going to, going to come back down to rigid body world, and we're going to bake the simulation. Okay, once that's done, press the space bar to play, and there we go. Press the space bar. I'm going to return this to zero and let's delete all the bakes and let's just try something else for fun. So I'm going to come to the next one, posing rotation. We're going to take that up and we're going to put that right next to it and let's bake the simulation again. Press the space bar. Now we can see those operating. So this is the benefit of this is that the extra organizational hierarchy that we put in place here makes this easy to come in and play with these iterations or these tests. So I could come back in here, set this back to zero, and I could come to the other side. So I could select the cone there, come over into the outliner and press the period key and that'll drop me down into the hierarchy that I'm going to be working in and I'll select posing rotation here and I could drag that up and then we'll do a bake. So let's delete bakes and then we'll do a bake all dynamics. Okay, press the space bar. Ta-da! You can play with these and have fun with the physics simulations.